Hey everyone, today we're bringing you a really sweet video. We're going to learn a cool minion wave management strategy from the master himself, Dopa, playing TF in Korean Challenger. This strategy works on any champion and is mostly used to get the best resets or opportunities to pressure without dying to the enemy jungler or the enemy laner, and it also doesn't give the enemy laner a chance to freeze. Let's get started by breaking down the matchup, then we'll get into the strategy. TF is an AP control mage versus Akali and AP assassin. TF has the range advantage and the wave clear advantage, while Akali does more overall damage. The only thing required for this strategy is that you have more wave clear than the enemy champion. Dopa's missions will be, mission 1, keep the wave in the middle. We'll talk about why this is important soon. Mission 2, harass when Akali goes for last hits. Just like in any range versus melee matchup, Dopa wants to use his range advantage to poke Akali when she steps up for a CS. Mission 3, crash every cannon wave. Crashing the wave on a cannon has multiple benefits, which we'll talk about throughout the video. Alright, let's get into the gameplay. At the start of the lane, Dopa does something here that we're not exactly sure on as he walks into lane then walks out of vision to topside. Our guess is he wanted to fake that he put a ward down in this area as this is something he has done before. The enemy jungler is Olaf. Let us know what you think the reason was in the comments. Anyways, after that he's going to head into lane and use a red card to grab all three of these minions. He's not touching any minions now, working on mission 1. To keep the wave in the middle, he needs to match Akali's push the whole time, which definitely isn't easy and takes practice, especially when he's going to start going for some poke. But as the next wave gets here, some of the blue minions start to get low and Akali is going to be looking to get them, so it's time to start mission 2. Dopa is going to pull a blue card here and just hold it, which makes Akali stay back and give up this minion, then Dopa throws it to grab a CS. Since his card is down, Akali takes that time to walk up and grab a minion, then looks to trade with her Q. If you don't know, Akali's level 1 is actually pretty good if she gets her passive autos off, so Dopa just backs up, giving up a few CS to avoid this damage. If we look at the waves, both of them have 4 minions each, so mission 1 is looking good. But I'm sure you might be wondering, by this point, why should we use this strategy over the typical range versus melee one where we slow push a big wave on the enemy tower and then harass? Or why not use the other strategy Dopa uses that we go over, where he will freeze mid all game which sets up ganks for his jungler? To understand this, we have to talk about the pros and cons of each strategy. The first and most popular one is the slow push into harass on tower strategy. The good part about this one is that it gives you a lot of time to harass the enemy champion, can get you tower damage, but if you take a bad trade the enemy can freeze using their tower and you can get stuck in a bad spot. Also you have to push without dying to ganks which a lot of players struggle with. And when playing TF as Akali, Silas or any of these other broken champions that are meta in mid, sometimes a minion wave won't save you and you can just die. That leads us to the next one, the freezing strategy. In this one, you don't have the risk of dying to ganks because you're freezing near your tower, but you also set up ganks. But it's hard to trade because to freeze a wave, the enemy has to have more minions than you, so your focus is more on wave management. So you don't get the harass and tower damage from the previous strategy. Now this strategy, that we're learning today, is the middle ground of the two. By keeping the wave in the middle, you have even minions, meaning you can still trade pretty well, and you're not pushing too hard where you're vulnerable to ganks or all-ins. The part about crashing the cannon wave we'll get into more soon. So how does Dopa know which strategy to use in each game? Well the main things are going to be the jungle and mid matchup. The enemy jungler is Olaf, his jungler is Lee Sin. If you don't know, Olaf is one of, if not the strongest early game jungler. If Dopa pushes the wave with the slow push strategy, that can pull jungle pressure from Olaf and Olaf's ganks can be tough to avoid as TF. If he baits him into a 2v2, the enemy team has a higher chance of winning with how weak TF is early on and how strong Akali and Olaf are. If he tries to freeze early and set up ganks, Akali has cleanse, and again if a 2v2 breaks out they'll probably lose. So the point is, Dopa wants to avoid 2v2s, which is what the strategy is good for. Alright let's get back into the gameplay now. Dopa is going to continue working on missions 1 and 2, and the third wave is here now, which is the cannon, so it's time to start thinking about mission 3. As the wave gets here, he uses his Q, hitting a lot of the minions and grabbing a last hit. Akali tries to get aggressive here, so he hits her with the blue card, backing up avoiding any big trades. Remember, Akali can lay on a lot of damage with her passive early. Since Dopa wants to crash the cannon wave for mission 3, he doesn't want to keep the waves even anymore and can start building up a wave, which is why he uses Q to get the push lead. If he tries to crash the wave here by spamming wave clear, it will freeze in front of the enemy tower. He can't push that fast at this point in the game, so he's going to combine the cannon wave with the next wave. To do this, he's just going to get a minion lead by pushing a little bit, which he did with his Q, but not too fast. He still wants the wave in the middle while he prepares a big wave. Okay, if we stop here, look at how the wave is still in the middle, but he has the minion advantage and the next wave is showing up to be a big one. This is exactly what you want. Now watch the difference in his gameplay. 
He's going to use Q on all 6 minions from the next wave, use a minion dematerializer on a ranged one, then clear the wave to crash it for mission 3. On APTF, you want to use the minion dematerializers on the ranged minions so you can clear them all with one Q around level 9. Alright, so he's crashed the wave, what does this do for him? Well if you notice, by crashing the cannon wave, Akali is forced to back off and there's no way to freeze. She would take way too much damage. Also, that wave is going to be under her tower for a while. So the benefits of crashing a cannon wave are, you can take a perfect reset, you have a lot of mid priority because of how long the wave is under tower, it's really hard for the enemy to freeze because of how much damage the cannon minion does, which is also why you stack up one more wave like Dopa did, and the wave will always push back the other way which puts the enemy laner in a weird spot because if they recall, they'll lose CS. Anyways, Dopa is going to use this time to put a ward on top side, which is the side he's going to be hugging since he knows Olaf started red and does a full clear, he should be on bot side at this point. Then he heads back into lane and looks for some harass onto Akali as she finishes clearing the wave. So if we look at the minion waves again, as we can see the wave is pushing back to Dopa, so the control of it is in his hands, Akali can't do anything to dictate where it will go at this point. The reason it's pushing back to Dopa is because of the even minion rule, which just means if the waves have the same amount of minions, whichever side of the lane it is on, it'll push the other way. This is also why mission 1 is keep the wave in the middle and not keep the minions even, because if they are even on Dopa's side of the lane, they will push towards Akali, there's nothing he could do about that. Anyways, Dopa is last hitting while letting the wave come back to the middle. Then works on mission 2 here, hitting Akali with a gold card and a Q when she walks up for this last hit. Notice how he doesn't auto attack her after stunning. He lets her walk up first, then autos to proc electrocute. If he autoed right after using his stun, he would take a lot more minion damage, but he backed up knowing she's going to walk up for this CS anyways, then hit her. Akali trades back a little here since Dopa just used his card, but he managed to quickly throw one more as it came off cooldown to poke her down a little bit more. Alright, it's a cannon wave again. Remember before Dopa stacked up another wave and crashed it for mission 3. Watch what he does here. If you've been paying attention, you should notice two big things he does differently here. First thing you should notice is that he used a minion dematerializer on the cannon after we said you should use all three on the ranged minions. And the second is that he didn't stack up the wave and he just hard pushed this right away. He does both of these things for two reasons. The first reason is that Olaf just showed on the map fighting in bot lane right now, so he has no chance of being ganked mid. And the second is that Akali has taken a few bad trades and is getting low. So if he tries to wait and stack up another wave, she can recall. He wants to pressure as hard as possible now while he knows he can't be ganked. Now he's going to really lay on the harass while getting tower damage, knowing Akali has no way out of this. She can't fight him with this low health and nobody is around to save her. Akali sticks around for a while though because she has cleanse and she knows if she recalls she's going to miss so much experience in gold. Notice Dopa isn't flashing in and using ignite or anything crazy. He can probably kill her by doing that even if she uses cleanse, but this is the thing about Dopa, he has a lot of self control and is very calculated with his aggression. He knows if she recalls, she loses lane anyways, and flashing getting the kill on her doesn't even do that much for APTF. An APTF with 1 or 2 kills doesn't really snowball that hard. He values the flash more than the 300 gold. The fight is still going on in bot lane though, so he's still hard shoving, and then Akali refuses to recall, and ends up dying to Dopa Q and auto and 1 tick of ignite. Alright guys, we talked about a lot in this video, ranging from why each of the 3 strategies we talked about were good why Dopa wanted to use this particular one, and why he switched up a little bit in the middle. Hopefully after watching this, you really see how much thinking goes into this game, and why Dopa is the king of solo queue. His wave management is the best of the best, and it's always a treat to break down his gameplay. But that's going to be it for this video, thanks for watching.